This is Stuart Talley, here to do another update on the ongoing Pinnacle Metal on Metal Hip trial uh, that is currently going on right now in Dallas, Texas. Uh, if you've been following our blog, you know that this is a case for uh, six uh, individuals, all from New York, um, and we heard uh, today the uh, opening statement of the defense attorney. Uh, the defense attorney, in his opening, went through uh, the history of the development of the metal on metal hip and spent a lot of time talking about how uh, in the 90s uh, there was a problem with metal on plastic hips in the sense that the plastic would wear out and cause a condition called osteolysis. Uh, that's where uh, plastic particles come off a hip and uh, it affects the bone around the hip and that's the primary reason why most metal on plastic hips need to be revised. Uh, typically, the problem occurs 15 to 20 years after the hip is put in. Uh, and so, uh, what the defense attorney spoke about was how there was uh, this desire in the 90s and early 2000 uh, time period to uh, develop something that would reduce wear debris. And so, the idea of the metal on metal hip came, came up and, and that's what um, they went with, essentially. Uh, he made one statement at one point which I found interesting. He said that the Pinnacle hip replacement system was the uh, best hip that had ever been developed. Uh, and I think it's going to be uh, difficult for him to uh, prove that at trial, but we'll, we'll see what they come up with. Um, the big thing he, he pointed out was that the Pinnacle hip system gave the surgeon the choice of using plastic, ceramic, or metal. Uh, in uh, the cup, and that was sort of the great development of the pinnacle. Um, he also spoke about and addressed directly uh, the manufacturing defect um, issues uh, that was brought up by the plaintiff's attorney in his opening statement. Uh, the plaintiff's attorney uh, pointed to several uh, manufacturing issues uh, with the pinnacle that uh, uh, he alleged increases the, the problems with the hip. Uh, and if you look at some of our older blogs, I can, you can find out the information about that manufacturing defect. What the defense attorney said was that there was no expert that was gonna come in and say that any of the plaintiff's hip actually had that manufacturing defect. Um, and so uh, we'll see how that plays out. That could be an issue for the plaintiffs if there is no testimony or evidence that the individual's hip uh, may have been in, impacted by um, a manufacturing defect, defect, but we'll see how that comes out. The other thing he spoke a lot about was how the jurors had to put themselves in the shoes of Depew at the, on the date of the surgery of each plaintiff. So what did the company know in 2006 when one of the plaintiffs had a surgery? What did the company know in 2008 when the plaintiff had a surgery? And what, they, what he said was that uh, the clinical uh, data and the information out there in the clinical studies on the pinnacle metal and metal hip was excellent, I think is what he said, on the dates of each of these surgeries. And it wasn't until later that the company discovered there were problems. Um, based on what's been uh, testified to in other cases, uh, other pinnacle cases, I think it's gonna be very difficult for uh, Depew to show that they didn't have knowledge of problems with this hip uh, before the dates of the surgeries. Uh, but that is, that's what the defense attorney uh, pointed out in his opening statement. Um, the other thing he talked about was how uh, before the hips were put in these plaintiffs, they had done very well and there had been 90,000 successful hip implants uh, throughout the world. Um, and that's significant that he said that in his opening. And the reason it's significant is, and this point was made up after the opening, uh, there was argument in front of the judge without the jury present about um, whether that opened the door to some uh, evidence that Depew does not want admitted. And specifically, there's evidence of, um, uh, of bribes that were paid to doctors in Europe that Depew actually pled guilty to. Um, and the plaintiff's attorney argued that, hey, if he's gonna come in and say that they sold 90,000, that means it's a good product, then we should be able to show uh, why 
they sold 90,000. And if they were able to sell so many because they were paying bribes to doctors in Europe, uh, that's evidence that the plaintiff should be able to, to admit at trial. The judge didn't rule on that issue um, and said he would think about it. So we'll see what happens on that in the future. Um, this idea of bribes, that's evidence that's come out in other trials and that's a big uh, uh, issue on appeal right now in some of the earlier pinnacle trials, but we'll see how uh, the judge comes out in this case. Um, if you have a metal on metal pinnacle hip, you have any questions about what's going on with the case, feel free to give us a call. You can reach us at the phone number on the screen. You can fill out our uh, online form and a lawyer will call you right back.